Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about mining asteroids. Because at least one major mission has been completed on board the International Space Station showing us that mining asteroids might be actually possible after all. But I wanted to start with this beautiful picture right here, taken by the wonderful researcher Rosa Santomartino. She actually has a lot of really cool pictures related to this because this is her study. And the idea behind this study and behind these experiments is basically using bacteria to try to mine asteroids or to try to mine rock essentially. But before we talk about this, why do we even need to care about space mining? Well, you know, in our pursuit of trying to colonize the moon or trying to colonize the entire solar system really, we have to be really realistic in understanding that without economics, without some sort of financial benefit or financial incentives, we're never going to succeed in colonizing the moon, Mars or really any other object out there. If there is no money to be made on the moon, if there is no money to be made on Mars, it's essentially going to be a failed experiment, which is one of the reasons why after the initial lunar missions in the 60s and 70s, nothing really happened on the moon afterwards. And a lot of these various experiments conducted on the International Space Station, especially in regards to the possibility of mining in zero-g conditions, are not just to satisfy our curiosity, but also to provide potential financial and also economic values to possible future missions that might involve some sort of mining in outer space. And obviously, if one day we go back to the moon and discover some kind of a precious material there that everybody wants to have, this will naturally create the economics by itself. But at the moment, we don't really know what there is on the moon, yet we want to colonize it and we want to create some kind of a financial incentive for companies to go there and to try to extract something. Same thing with Mars. And so in some sense, we're sort of doing this backwards. We're trying to find something to mine and trying to find a way to mine it, but we don't truly know what it's going to be yet. But what we do know is that one of the ways we can mine stuff, at least here on planet Earth, is using bacteria. There's a term called bioleaching, which refers to a type of a mining process where instead of, for example, chemicals, we actually use bacteria to try to extract as much material as possible. And we know that, for example, bacteria is really good at doing this. As a matter of fact, it's much more effective than even using chemicals. Generally, different types of bacteria are extremely good at extracting various materials from all sorts of different samples. But this field, known as biomining, is still in its infancy. We kind of understand how it works and we know that it's definitely possible, but it also had its failures already. One very well-known example is the Finnish mining company known as Anthium that went bankrupt a couple of years ago, but whose business model was entirely dependent on this biomining or bioleaching. But unfortunately, even though it was an effective strategy, they did a horrible job at trying to prevent various types of contamination, which was one of the reasons they actually suffered quite a lot financially. Nevertheless, we know that biomining works and we know that it's actually really effective. We've even discovered certain fungi or mushrooms that can biomine just as well as bacteria. So in that sense, it's a very promising field. And unlike typical mining, the extraction rate for biomining often reaches about 90%, way higher than even a chemical extraction process that would also leave a lot of biohazard behind as well. But here on planet Earth, it's still not as efficient as the standard type of mining, and it's also relatively difficult to control because once the bacteria starts to essentially just eat up all of the stuff, it's extremely difficult to make it stop. And because of this, the runoff effect is usually really high. But that's on Earth. What if we were to take this and to try this in space where it doesn't really matter as much? And though obviously we can try to bring heavy machinery and all kinds of mining machinery to the moon or to various asteroids, Doing this would be extremely expensive. The cheapest rocket launch right now usually costs around $1,500 per kilogram, and a lot of the mining machinery is much, much heavier than that. But technically, we could bring a bacteria that can then also proliferate and reproduce, creating more bacteria. So in that sense, biomining is a perfect solution. And so approximately a year ago, in July of 2019, several different containers with three types of bacteria and various samples were shipped to the International Space Station to try to discover if this biomining process worked in zero-g conditions as well. The paper has a slightly better description of all of this, but essentially each of these so-called biomining reactors 
contained a piece of a volcanic rock, one of three different types of bacteria, and some other supplements for the bacteria to grow. And these biomining reactors were separated into zero-g or high-g conditions. Basically, some of them were placed into a centrifuge to try to simulate uh, gravity. Others only received partial gravity, simulating conditions similar to Mars, whereas the last sample was given zero-g conditions, simulating a typical asteroid. And the three bacteria were this guy right here, this is Bacillus subtilis, and that's a bacteria that's already actually used for biomining purposes by actual companies. And also, apparently, this bacterium also lives inside our bellies, which means that a typical astronaut could actually just bring this with them, and then by extracting this from our bellies, we could use this on a different planet, for example. But that's, of course, something that we're not entirely sure how to do just yet. Just a fun fact. The other bacterium known as Cupria vidus metallidurans is known for being able to capture gold and for actually being very efficient at capturing various other metals, and so if it's effective in space, it could be used to extract metals on other objects. And lastly, the third bacterium was this. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. And unfortunately, I couldn't really discover much about it. But the interesting thing is that it was this bacterium that seemed to be the most effective at being able to extract stuff in zero-g conditions. The study discovered that up to about 400 more percent of material was extracted from the basalt rock by uh, this unusual bacterium. And it also seemed that it didn't matter if it was zero-g, low-g, or high-g conditions. This bacterium was really good at extracting stuff, specifically rare metals, which would be very expensive if we could somehow extract them on, for example, the moon. And most importantly, it did a much better job than any of the other bacterium in any of the other conditions. Which of course suggests that with enough nutrients and with just the right amount of protection, this bacterium could easily be used as a kind of a remote biomining facility on, for example, the moon, on various asteroids, and of course on Mars as well. And although obviously it's still not very economical for us to try to extract these materials and to then try to bring them back to Earth, we could definitely use this bacterium for a kind of our own site mining by using very little material and by using absolutely no human power whatsoever. And then just essentially extracting all of these metals and rare materials using the technique that we know works in space and also works here on planet Earth as well. And so when it comes to finding the economic reasons for us to, for example, settle on the moon and to somehow colonize this beautiful object, there is at least one solution now. The region right here that you're looking at, this relatively young region known as Oceanus Procellarum, as you may have learned from the previous video, is actually really rich in various rare metals and a lot of other material that is actually kind of expensive on planet Earth and would potentially give this region a very good economic reasons for us to try to settle it. And so by constructing some sort of autonomous, possibly robotic mine here, and by using this bacteria to try to extract the materials here, we could potentially find really good reasons to start building up infrastructure and to economically develop the moon, kickstarting the colonization of the entire solar system. And honestly, without these economic reasons for doing this, it's very unlikely that we're ever going to settle the moon or any other object. Because historically at least, colonization and essentially trying to conquer new areas really has always been about the money and the finances. Even though scientific curiosity usually starts something, we still need to have a financial reason to continue doing something for a long period of time. And it looks like, because of this recent experiment and this recent study, we might actually have reasons to go to the moon and to try to create a colony there after all. But anyway, on that note, check out the paper in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.